We have known that Ireland would send Ryan O'Shaughnessy to Eurovision for some time, and today we finally got his song, Together, whose name I forgot, which may tell you something. Should we talk about it? Let's, Let's do, do this. this. Yes, he of course is known to many Eurovision fans from his appearances on reality singing shows and talent shows like Britain's Got Talent and... The Voice of Ireland. Thank you, sir. And his song has dropped. And I just want to sum this up with a reader's comment. Brennan said on Wee Wee Blogs, The song sounds vaguely like something you'd hear while on hold with customer service. And I think it's a really good description. This is background music, it's inoffensive, it's pleasant, but it is in no way memorable. You hear it, you forget it, you may compare it to Irish Eurovision songs of the past. There is nothing original or new here. To me, it sounds like a demo. There is minimalist, which can be great, and then there is unfinished. This sounds unfinished, like it was written in someone's garage with very best intentions. I don't know how or why Ireland went with this after <clears throat> all the hoo-ha of they were going to have a new approach, you know, this was going to be different, a new path. That new path led you back to your old path, and unfortunately it's very disappointing. Final point for me, in this semi-final, semi-final one in the second half, you have a series of ballads which are more original, more ethnic, they have more flair. Armenia, soulful and Armenian. Greece, soulful and ethnic. Croatia, more mysterious, more dramatic. And then you've got Austria, which is just a better quality song. I'm not optimistic about Ireland's chances. I think Ryan's a great singer, but this song is not showcasing his talents, and it's not good enough. Poor Rick. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Um, but I have some positives because Last year when the Irish song was revealed, I was positively revulsed by it. I just hated it from first listen. Just whatever was with Brendan Murray's voice, it just went through my eardrums and it was like a saw going, and I despised the song for three whole months until it was done with in May and I haven't listened to it since. This, for the difference, like you said, it's pleasant, it's nice, it's sweet. You don't rush to the play to the skip button to get rid of it and move on to the next song but it's very anonymous and nondescript like it could be from anywhere it could be for anything it's not a competitive song and i think especially if you're looking at it or listening to it just the audio only there's nothing to grab your attention for the difference when you're looking at it with the music video they have the story there's the gay couple walking down the street and they're doing these kind of modern dances and this kind of fleeting moments where they're kind of um kind of where they're doing stuff in the doorway and i kind of can't remember it all exactly but it's a sweet video but i don't know how they're going to replicate that on stage or what they're going to do with the staging because the staging is going to be very important and as we've been told so depressingly and so many times that there's no leds in lisbon and yeah so like it's a pleasant song but it's not competitive and the video makes it a bit more gripping, but then the video doesn't match up with the song either because it's like, I thought we would be together forever and there's lying and all this kind of stuff, whereas the couple in the video are very much still in love, so it doesn't match up with the song, which is a breakup song, essentially. Mm. I um, I watched, I listened to the song a few times, watched the video, and the weird thing is I can't actually remember how it goes. I mean, even just before we started this doing this video I listened to it again to refresh my memory and it's gone I it's completely blank um I think that's the problem like it he'll, might come on stage he will give a really good performance but when viewers come to vote if they can't remember the song they're not going to vote for it even you know if it's in the recap it just might not be enough to trigger people's um emotional memories the video is really good um, it's really beautifully shot, Dublin at night, looking really like all the lights, looking really pretty, the couple. I think it's shot um, filmed in a single take, so that's kind of 
this really nicely designed choreographed with all the, the movements and the camera swooping around. But yeah, I I don't think they can bring that to Lisbon. Um, I don't know if maybe they have something up their sleeve, but um, it is it is disappointing. Um, just the song on its own just is really lackluster, and even the claims of there being a gospel choir, the energy that you think that could bring to the song isn't there. It just feels like something really big is missing. Um, I've seen comments from our readers saying, oh, it would be it's pretty good, but it could do with a revamp. But the deadline is March the 12th. We're only a few days away. There isn't time for a revamp. This is what we're getting, and it isn't good enough. I think Austria Cesar took the gospel choir. In that song, you hear it, and it works, and it adds something. I don't even mm. remember the gospel choir in this. I really don't. I think this will be competitive, actually. Competitive for last place with Iceland in semi-final one of Eurovision 2018, which is unfortunate because you have a great singer, Borg. This kid can sing. He's telegenic. I think a lot of people would really get behind it. You know, attractive young lads singing emotional ballads, women's ovaries will explode. You know, teen girls will swoon. But um, yeah, the, swoon, the song kind of kills any swoonage that might happen. I just want to read two other comments. Hector says, I think the song promises a lot at the beginning, but after that, the chorus is a bit weak. And Julili says, I hope to hear this only one more time in my life. I had high hopes that after the victory of a brilliant song from Salvador Sobral in 2017, this year would be packed with some masterpieces. One more plastic song from Ireland. ESC is turning into a contest of awful music for people with bad taste. I mean, hello. <laughs> Tell us what you really think. Um... And on the music video, I do think that's where their point of difference will be. Bring the same-sex couple to the stage, have something as artistic and interesting. It's timely. I guess it maybe nods to the ele your first gay prime minister, or is he a president? He's been there for a while now. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Social change in Ireland, who knows? Maybe there's a broader picture, a broader story here, which is nice. Um, yeah. On the whole, it's a no for me. Bring back the boy with the balloon, because this is basically the same <laughs> song from last year without the falsetto. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah. And see, even there's things that annoy me that, like, he had, he released a five-second snippet on his Instagram story, and basically the five-second snippet is the song. You, there's nothing, like, the five-second snippet is probably the most exciting part of the song. And then what annoys me as well is that the Irish PR is non-existent, because they just randomly out of the blue dropped it on the radio to, this afternoon at like 3 p.m no advance warning to anyone like they didn't even attempt to build up hype so i'm not confident that they will have any hype come um may because hype doesn't just come out of thin air and with the music video they kind of have a platform where they can build something because they have more to go from that music video than sam marino who are randomly starting this bullying campaign uh, malta have the mental health Whereas Ireland have this perfect video with the same sex couple and everything that's going on in Europe surrounding that. And yet the vid, the song comes out with minimal fuss and any PR effort so far seems to have been just coming from Ryan himself. And it's a male female duet. There is a there is a female singer that's mm. sort of doing a counterpoint with him. So I'm not quite sure what they're thinking. Um, it, it almost seems like there are different people working on different parts of the campaign. Um, I get the feeling that the staging will be done by someone completely new and it will have a completely different feel. But yeah, um, they said earlier in the year that they were, like, like uh, this year was um, following um, Salvador's win. It was going back to basics and they were going back to what Ireland was good at in the 90s. But songs like that don't do well at Eurovision anymore. Um, it, it would be as crazy as entering like a, a Spice Girls style rap <laughs> song. <laughs> Hello, Sam. <Sarah, laughs> <Marino. Sarah, Marino. laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's it's a really unusual choice of song, and I I just think it it just doesn't feel like the best thing about it is Ryan. He's a yeah. he's a brilliant performer, and I just feel that they've they've messed up. They've got him, but they haven't given him a good enough song. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to well, see what they do. Well, at the end of the day, if the tabloid rumours are to be believed, he was the second choice. And you can see now why he wasn't RT's first choice. Back to basics or just basic, I will leave that one with you. 
Maybe he'll elevate it live. Look, Brendan Murray, I didn't like the studio cut, but then I actually thought the live performance was okay, and there was some creativity there. It was memorable. I remember that big old balloon. I remember that falsetto. So maybe he will surprise us live. We know Ryan is a great performer. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Where does Ireland, the little Ireland sit in your tops list? Do you think Ryan can elevate this live? Is the song a billboard number one? Let us know here on Wooby Blogs. Make sure to subscribe, and once you've done that, hit the notifications bell. And tell us what you think in the comments below. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.